If there's one thing we all learned in 2020, it's that change is the only thing that's gonna stay the same. So it's really how we respond to change that dictates our success. So when I started thinking about what I could share with businesses who are going through these incredible times of challenge and change, I thought back to the Fast Company Magazine article. They took a look at the world's most consistently high-performing extreme teams with an eye toward discovering how did they not just accomplish their mission, but continue to be at the top of their game. And that's what I bring to you in Adapt, Overcome, and Win as One is those stories and those tactics that the world's most consistently high-performing extreme teams use to cross their most challenging finish lines. They have traveled here from every corner of the world. For 10 non-stop days and nights, they must hike, mountain climb, paddle, ride, and race through some of the most captivating yet dangerous terrain in one of the last great wilderness areas on Earth. There are a lot of moments in races where it gets really tough, but we're gonna go faster. We're gonna paddle harder because we know that's where the competition is gonna slow down a little bit. You know, when they're really challenged, when they're really facing the unknown, that's when they're gonna get slower. But for us, that's when we would make a conscious decision to speed up. When you're in the Class 5 Whitewater, when you're mountain biking through really challenging terrain, do you know where your stability comes from? Speed. It comes from going faster. So when you're facing those crazy, tough, challenging times, go fast. One thing that I think all of us have learned in 2020, we're never gonna be defined by the setbacks. We're always gonna be defined by our comebacks. It's your moment to decide what is that comeback gonna look like and get to work on creating that comeback right now. One of my favorite stories that I share is about a guy named Dawat Mutang who was pulled out of his hut in the middle of the Borneo rainforest to race with the best team in the world after they had a teammate break his ankle. This man had never ridden a bike, he'd never been in a boat, he'd never used a map or a compass, he'd literally never done any of these sports, but he had the courage to jump on their team. They almost won, they took second place. And very often, the new person or the rookie or the outside resource can bring such an interesting you know, and unique background or perspective that they can often be the linchpin you know, to your team's success. There's also a lot in Adapt, Overcome, and Win as One about adapting. So a lot of our success is about our creativity and our ability to innovate and our agility. And my favorite story, we were neck and neck with the best team in the world. And when we got to the final section where we had to paddle to the finish line, we were given two inflatable canoes. And so our competitors grabbed their canoe paddles, jumped in their canoes, and they were gone down the river. And my teammate, Steve Gurney, turned to all of us and he said, hey guys, I got an idea. Let's swap out our canoe paddles for kayak paddles because that's our strength. And also tie our two boats together end to end. And between those two things, that boat was twice as fast. Solomon Presidio charges forward, determined to catch the leaders before the transition to the sea kayaks. <laughs> we blew the doors off the best team in the world and won that race by two hours because of that white space thinking that our team was kind of famous for. You know, so the big question is, how are you gonna take your core strengths and talents and background and experience and your creativity and your agility and your amazing resources and your great teammates and say, you know what? I'm not just gonna find a way to tilt the game board in my favor or my company's favor or my family's favor or my customer's favor. Maybe I'm gonna find a way to completely change the game. So it's really important for me to deliver a truly professional product when we do virtual keynotes. So I decided I need to take it up a notch. <laughs> I went and found an amazing professional studio. It's customized with your logos and your themes. I have an incredible producer and it's just like we have a full professional setup like we'd have if we were on stage. Neither you nor I have to worry about the tech side. 
my team has your back so you can enjoy the show. People see these teams and these leaders succeeding against all odds, like a woman on the top Japanese team that ripped her Achilles tendon. And most teams would have quit. Their team decided to see a challenge instead of a roadblock, and they carried her up and over the tallest mountain in Queensland, Australia. Hi, uh, you aren't gonna believe this. In the East Wind, taking turns carrying their female teammate up Bartle Frere. No lie, over. I love, love, love the fact that all of those members of Team Eastwind had their injured teammate on their shoulders. They made her the hero. We don't inspire the people around us by showing them how amazing we are. We inspire everybody around us by putting them on our shoulders and showing them how talented and useful and worthy and amazing and courageous and smart they are. I love this new keynote because people are genuinely and deeply fired up. They're inspired. They want to take on the next adventure and not just survive it. They want to win this race and they know that they can do it together. In their heart and soul, they know that if they keep their head up high, their heart open, they connect to the people around them, that anything is possible. That's something that is a gift that I can't wait to give your team.